everyone, today I'm going to show you how to get the game Counter-Strike 2 working on the Apple Silicon Mac. So at the time of recording, there's no official Mac port at the moment. However, we can run the Windows version of the game using a compatibility layer called Crossover. And as you can see, this runs surprisingly well on Apple Silicon hardware. So in this video today, I'm going to show you the entire process of how to get this running, including installing Crossover, Steam, running this through Game Porting Toolkit or DXVK, and hopefully turning this over until an official Mac port gets released. So the first thing I'm going to do is to click on the link at the top of the description for my affiliate link for Crossover. If you click the link and make a purchase, then I'll make a small commission and you'll be helping to support this channel and the content that I create. So once you've clicked on the link in the description, we'll be taken to the store page or you can go to codeweavers.com and click on buy now. I do recommend making a purchase of Crossover Plus, which comes with 12 months support. If you want to get a discount, then make sure to use the promo code Apple Gaming Wiki New and just apply here. And then you're going to get a 20% discount. And right now you can get a 23% discount if you use the coupon code GAMEMODE3. This is valid until October the 17th. And anyway, once already, you can click the buy now button and then you can go ahead and fill out your details. Alternatively, if you want to try this out, you can also go to the Code Weavers website, click the try now button, then you can fill out these details and get a fully featured 14 day free trial. So that's what we're going to do today. Here we're downloading Crossover 23.5, which is the latest at the time of recording. So once Crossover is downloaded, we're going to go to Finder and then we're going to go to our downloads folder. We're going to find our Crossover zip file here. So all we need to do is double click. It's going to extract. And then we have the crossover app here. We're going to drag and drop this and put this into our applications folder. Once that's copied over, we'll click on applications and then we're going to scroll until we find the crossover app. So go ahead and double click. Here it's saying crossover is an app downloaded from the internet. Are we sure we want to open? Press open. So once this is open, we've got the option to install applications and games. So the first thing we're going to do is to download Steam. So click on the Steam icon here. We'll do a search for it. Then we're going to click on install Steam. It's going to download and install Steam into a brand new Windows 10 64 bit bottle. Here we're just going to say yes to installing these various fonts. A lot of progress is going to happen in the background you don't have to click anything in particular. So now we're going to go through the Windows Steam setup. So just click next, select your language, select the default installation. Now we're going to allow this to run Steam. So this is downloading a 300 megabyte update. Just let that finish. So now we have the Steam login screen. We can log in with our username and password, or we can scan the QR code with the Steam app on a smartphone. So now we're logging in. So now the Windows version of Steam has loaded up, and it means that we can basically go ahead and download Windows versions of games and try to run them through crossover. So here I'm going to go through my library and we're going to install a game. So we'll just do a search for Counter-Strike 2 and then we're going to press install. Then we're going to install this into the default location, press install, and then it's going to start the install process. So now that the game has fully downloaded, we can run the game, but we need to do one more thing, which is to change the bottle settings here. So basically we need to quit out of Steam, press exit here. So back within Crossover, we're going to click on our Steam bottle that we just created and we have a few options here. So I do recommend turning on eSync, especially for Counter-Strike 2. So I'm going to turn that on and reboot the bottle and enable eSync. And then we have two options here, which we can both run the game through. So D3D Metal, which uses Game Porting Toolkit. This translates DirectX 11 and 12 into Metal. Or we have the option here for DXVK, which translates DirectX 11 into Vulkan, and then Molten VK turns that into Metal. And both of these options do work. You should experiment with which one works best for you. So according to testing from some Mac stuff, the DXVK version of this game is going to run a lot better. So I'm going to enable DXVK, then I'm going to reopen Steam. So I'm using command line options provided by the YouTube for some Mac stuff who successfully managed to get Counter-Strike 2 working great on the Mac. We're going to go ahead and right click on Counter-Strike 2. I'm going to go ahead and paste these launch options, which I'll leave in the description. Just go ahead and copy and paste them here. Close this. And then we're going to go ahead and play this using DXVK. Here it's installing various scripts and other dependencies. Just wait for that to finish. And then the game is going to launch. So just be aware that the first time you run this game, it might take a few minutes for this orange Counter-Strike 2 splash screen to come up. It took me about three or four minutes the very first time I ran this. Also, you're going to notice that there's going to be quite a lot of stuttering, especially when you're running this game for the first time. And that's because the shaders and animations are being cached. So you might have to run through a few bot matches before you're able to play at a decent frame rate. So as you can see, the game isn't running too badly. It's definitely a playable frame rate on my N1 Max chip. Anecdotally, I've heard that anything under a M1 Pro might have trouble rendering this game through crossover. However, I think you should definitely experiment with this, see if it runs on your machine. I'm also going to leave a link in the description for a Reddit thread with some tips and tricks, which might help you to improve performance in this game. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.